Introduction This book contains the introductory remarks of Imam Muslim placed at the beginning of his collection. It contains a number of narrations, most of which are not hadith and which may not all meet the strict standards of, uh, authentic, of authenticity required of all hadith in the Sahih. The translation here has been general has been generously provided by Abu Najm Fer Fernando bin Al Iskandar. In the name of Allah, the Merciful, the Beneficent, all praise is due to Allah, Lord of the Worlds, and the Praiseworthy, and is, um, and is for those who fear Him, and may Allah send blessings upon Muhammad seal of the prophets and upon all the prophets and messengers as for what follows indeed you mentioned may allah have mercy on you by the guidance of your creator that you were interested in an examination of what is known of all the transmitted reports on authority of the messenger of allah peace and blessings upon him Regarding traditions of the din, its, its rulings and everything from it regarding rewards, punishments, motivations, admonishments and other descriptive topics through chains, chains of narration which were related by and circulated between Al-Ul-Ilm. Al-Ul-Ilm. Thus you wished, may Allah guide you all right, all right, to, to be informed about all of the transmitted reports in the form of a calculated composition and you asked me to abridge it for you in writing without a great amount of repetition. You alleged that, uh, that much repetition would distract you from what you intended in terms of understanding and deriving rulings from the reports <laughs> and because of that which you have asked may Allah be gen generous with you when I am attributed to its successful management and whatever condition can be construct construed by it if Allah wills it will lead to a praiseworthy ending and obtainable benefit <laughs> I thought at the time you asked me to undertake that task if it was determined for me to do so and preordained for me to complete it that the first to benefit from that would be me special spe specifically before before anyone else and this is due to a great number of reasons which are too length lengthy to describe except to say that in summary, having precision regarding a select few narr narrations and accuracy in them is easier for a person than to undertake of a great of a great number of them, and especially for one who is indistinguishable in it from the common people in this matter, unless someone else informs him of the distinction. <laughs> If the matter is just as we described, then focusing on the few authentic narrations is worthier for them than seeking an abundance of weak narrations. Although indeed it is hoped for that some, pe for that some benefit is attained by seeking after a large number of hadith of this type and gathering their repetitions for them, but only for the elite who are endowed with some awareness and knowledge in their means of assert ascertaining authenticity and the de defects. Thus that if Allah wills will happen through whatever will be brought to bear of that awareness, distinction, knowledge of the means and defects on the advantage in seeking large numbers of the various categories of hadith and as for the common people who are different from the elite 
in terms of awareness and knowledge, then it is senseless for them to seek large numbers of various categories of hadith while they are unaware of the few sahih. Then we, if Allah wills, will begin to extract and compose what you have asked upon conditions which we shall mention to you. We set ourselves upon the in entirety of what is transmitted from the reports on authority of the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings upon him. Then we divided it up into three sections and three levels of people without repetition except One, when coming to a point where it was essential to repeat a narration in which there is an addition that clarifies the meaning of the first one or two, when there is a second chain that, su that supports the first one in some hidden defect present since the additional significance in the second hadith assumes the position of a complete hadith. Repeating narrations which have the kind of, of addition we described is an in 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 inevitable since it eliminates the perceived hidden defect of the first narration or that significance of the addition is separated from the entire narration by abbreviating it when it is possible to understand the significance from a small part of the narration. However, separating the relevant part of the narration from the rest might make it difficult to understand the link between them. So repeating it in, it, in, in its original form, when that proves difficult, is safest. Thus, when we find that it is avoidable to repeat the narrations in their entirety, we take, we take care not to do so, if Allah wills. As for the first category, we aspired to advance the report which is safer from defects than any others and is purified due to being rel related by people of integrity in hadith and certitude for what they relate. There are no strong disputes found compared to the reports of other tikat regarding their transmissions and no excessive inconsistencies in their own reports, just as is the case regarding a great number of muhadditin and which appears in their narrations. Thus, when we examined reports of this description from the people, we also came across reports in whose chains chains there fell some of those who are not described with memorization and precision, like those of the previous description before them, although they fell below what we described from the first group, they still have the designation of protection from ill repute and truthfulness, and they acquired knowledge, including included among them are the likes of Atta bin Is Saib and Yasid bin Abi Siad and Late bin Abi Sulaim from among the carriers of Attar and the relators of Akbar. So even though they possessed what we described of knowledge, protection, and being known as scholars among al ulim their, their contemporaries, who we mentioned as precise and sound in transmission, were above them in status and rank because this is because this the first category is a high rank and sublime characteristic, according to al ul. Lim. Do you not see that when you weigh these three people, we mentioned Atta, Yasid, and late with Mansur bin Il Mutamir, 
Sulaiman al Amas and Ismail bin Abi Khalid in regards to precision in hadith and soundness in it. You will find them distinct from others and not near them in rank. <coughs> there is no doubt regarding that among the people knowledgeable in hadith, since the soundness of the memorization of Mansur, Al Amas and Ismail and their precision in hadith was well known among the people knowledgeable in hadith and they were not aware of examples of that from Atta, Yasid and late. Upon the same course as the above, when you weigh between the two levels like Ibn Avn and Ayyub as Saktiani with Av Ibn Abi Yamila and Ashat al Humrani and all four are companions of Al Hassan and Ibn Sirin Sirin there is disp disparity between the two groups between these two groups is a distance in terms of perfection of virtue and soundness of reporting even though Af and Ashat are not re repelled from the status of truthfulness and honesty according to Al Ul Ilm rather the situation is as we described regarding their position we only mentioned these examples by way of naming them specifically so that their examples might be an indication for whoever is ignorant of the path to return to understanding of Al Ul Ilm regarding the ranking of its people thus there is no short short changing the men of ever ever elevated rank any amount of what is due his level and there is no elevation of those who are lower any who are lower any amount of knowledge above his position and each who possesses the right is given his right and is settled in his rank It has been mentioned on authority of Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, that she said, the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah upon him, ordered us to afford people their rightful positions according to what the Quran states, and above all who possess knowledge is another who is knowledgeable. Yusuf 76, thus based on the example of what we mentioned regarding the narr narrators of Hifs and Itgon and narrations which lack excessi exce excessive inconsistency or strong contradiction we compiled what you asked for of those kind of reports on authority of the Messenger of Allah peace and blessings of Allah upon him as for anything of that wherein the people were, cha were charged with some criticism by the people of Hadith or by the majority of the people of Hadith then we did not preoccupy ourselves with bringing forward their narrations such as Abd Allah ibn Miswar, Abi Jafar, Il Madan Madaini, Amr bin Khalid, Abd Il Qudus, Ash Shami Muhammad ibn Said, Il Maslub, Giyat ibn Ibrahim, Sulaiman bin Amir, Abi, Dawud, An Nakaf, Nakai, and those like them, whereof they were accused of fabrication. They were they were they were accused of fabricating narrations and manufacturing reports, and like that are those whose narrate, narrations are dominated with munkar or mistakes be withheld from their narrations as well. An indication of munkar in the narration <coughs> of a muhadith is when his transmission 
differs with the transmission of a muhadith from the people of memorization and acceptance or does not agree with it when the two are compared when the majority of a person person's narrations are like that he is abandoned mah mahjud in hadith and not accepted in it and his narrations are not acted upon the following are those muhadithin who are among this group abd allah ibn muharrar yahya bin abi unayash unaysa al jara bin ul minhal abul atif abad bin katir hussein bin abd la ibn Dumaira, Umar bin Suban, and those of the same type in terms of transmission of Munkar Hadith. We did not pause upon their narrations or preoccupy ourselves with them due to the ruling of Al Ul Ulm, that which we are aware of from their school of thought in accepting what is singularly reported by a muhadith from the narrations is that the muhadith took <coughs> part along with the trustworthy narrators from al ul lim wal hifs in transmitting some of what they transmitted and the muhadith is predominantly in agreement with them when one is found like that, then if he adds to the transmission anything not found with his companions, then his addition is accepted. As, as for those who you see resorting to the likes of Asuri, due to his greatness and due to the great number of his companions being among the precise Hufas, resorting to his hadith and the hadith of those like him or or to the likes of Hisham ibn Urwa then their hadith are extensively shared among al ul -ilm. the greater majority of their companions related their hadith in agreement with one another with few having contradictions thus to transmit from Urwa and us Suri or one of them from among the multitude of hadith what is not known among any of their companions and the Ravi is not of those who share in the Sahih narrations found among them then it is not allowed to accept the narrations of this category of people and Allah knows best we have explained from the school of Hadith and its people some of what those who wish to traverse the path of the Muhadithin should aim for and be guided towards. We will, if Allah wills, add to the explanation and clarification in another place in this book upon the mention of defective reports, Mu'Allah, Mu'Allah. When we, come to, when we come to it in the places where explanation and clarification are appropriate if Allah wills and what follows. May Allah have mercy on you, if not for that which we saw of an evil act, largely from those who claim to be muhadithin in what they were supposed to adhere to when putting forward weak narrations and abominable transmissions and their neglect for the investigation of famous Sahih narrat narrations related by the trustworthy narrators well known for their truthfulness and honesty after knowledge of them and affirmation, affirm affirmation with their tongues that a great many of weak and abominable nar narrations which were cast towards heedless people 
are denounced and spoken of as not acceptable, whereof the Aima of the people of Hadith criticized their transmissions. Aima, like Malik ibn Anas, Shubat bin al Hajja, Sufyan bin Uyayna, Yahya bin Said al Katan, Abd ir Rahman ibn Madi, and other Aima, then the establishment of what you ask for of distinction between the types of hadith and collection of those which were sahih would be easy for us. However, on account of what we informed you of regarding the people's circulation of abominable reports with weak, unknown chains, and their casting them towards the common people who are not aware of their deeds, of their effects, of their defect, defects, responding to what you asked, became lighter upon our hearts. <laughs> Chapter 1 the, oblig the Obligation of Transmitting on Authority of Trustworthy Narrators and Abandoning the Liars. No, no, may Allah exalted is he grant you success that what is obligatory upon everyone who is aware of the distinction between the Sahih transmissions and their weak, the trustworthy narrators from those who stand accused is to not transmit from them except what is known for the soundness of its emergence and the protection of its narrators and that they fear what may be from those accused of deficiency in narrating and the stubborn people of invocation the proof that what we have said is required above what opposes what opposes it is in the verse O you who believe if a sinful person comes to you with news then verify it lest you afflict people through through ignorance then you become sorry about what you did al hujurat 6 and the verse from whom you are pleased with from the witnesses Al Baqarah 282. And the verse, and let two possess integrity among you bear witness. At Talak 2. Thus it demonstrates what we mentioned from these two verses that the report of the sinful is dropped and not accepted, and that the testimony Shahada of, of one who does not possess integrity is rejected and the report kabar as well even though its significance is separated from the meaning of testimony in some respects they are in agreement regarding the overall conditions they share since the report of the sinful is not acceptable according to al ul ilim just as his testimony is rejected according to all of them. The Sunnah demonstrates the prohibition of transmitting abominable transmissions, just as in the example from the Quran regarding the prohibition of the report of the sinful. There is a famous narration on authority of the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah upon him, that Whoever relates on my authority a narration while aware that it is a lie, then he is one of the liars. Abu Bakr ibn Abi Shaiba narr narrated it to us that Waki narrated to us on authority of Shuba, on authority of Al Hakam, on authority of Abd ir Rahman ibn Abi Layla on authority of Samura bin Jundab and also Abu Bakr 
Ibn Abi Shaiba narrated to us that Waki narrated to us on authority of Shuba and Sufyan, on authority of Habib, on authority of Maimun ibn Abi Shabib, on authority of al mughirat ibn Shuba. They both said that the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah upon him, said the same thing. Chapter 2 Warning about lying upon the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah upon him. Abu Bakr ibn Abi Shaiba narrated to us that Gundar narrated to us on authority of Shuba and Muhammad bin Ul Mutana and Ibn Bashar both narrated to us, they said. Muhammad bin Jafar narrated to us. Shuba narrated to us on authority of Mansur, on authority of Rabi ibn Hiras, that he heard Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, giving a kutbah, and he said that the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah upon him, said, Do not lie upon me, indeed, whoever lies upon me will enter the fire. Suhair bin Harb narrated to me, Ismail rather Ibn Ulaya narrated to us on authority of Abd il Aziz ibn Shuhaib, on authority of Anas bin Malik that he said, Indeed, what prevents me from relating to you a great number of hadith is that the Messenger of Allah peace and blessings of Allah upon him, said, Whoever intends to lie upon me, then let him take his seat in the fire. Muhammad bin Ubaid il Gubari narrated to us, Abu Avana narrated to us on authority of Abi Hasin, on authority of Abi Sal Sali. On authority of Abu Huraira, he said, The Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah upon him, said, Whoever lies upon me intentionally, then let him take his seat in the fire. Muhammad bin Abd Allah ibn Numair narrated, narrated to us, My father narr narrated to us, Said bin Ubaid narrated to us, Ali bin Rabia narrated to us, he said. I arrived at, at the Majid and, and al Mughira, the Amir of al Kufa, said, I heard the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah upon him saying, Indeed, a lie upon me is not like a lie upon anyone else, for whoever lies upon me intentionally, then he shall take his seat in the fire. <laughs> Ali bin Hujr as Sa'i Sadi narrated to us, Ali bin Mushir narrated to us, Muhammad bin Qais Il Asadi, Asadi informed us on the authority of Ali bin Rabiyat al -Asadi, Asadi, on authority of al Mughirat ibn Shuba, on authority of the Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah upon him. A similar narration, however, he did not mention the words, indeed a lie upon me is not like a lie upon anyone else. Chapter 3 The Prohibition of Narrating Everything Else, Everything One Hears. Ubaid Allah bin Mu'ad al-Anbari narrated to us, my father narrated to us, and Muhammad bin Ul Mutana Muta narrated to us, Abd ur Rahman bin Mahdi both narrated to us, Shuba narrated to us, on authority of Kubaib bin Abd ur Rahman, on authority of Hafs bin Asim 
on authority of Abi Huraira, he said, The Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah upon him, said, It is enough of a lie for a man to, narr to narrate everything he hears. Abu Bakr bin Abi Shaiba narrated to us, Ali bin Hafs narrated to us, Shuba narr narrated to us, on authority of Kubaib bin Abd id Rahman, on authority of Hafs bin Asim, on authority of Abi Huraira, on authority of the Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah upon him, the same as that. <laughs> Yahya bin Yahya narrated to us, Hushayim informed us on authority of Suleiman at Taimi, on authority of Abi Uthman and Nadi, he said, Umay bin ul Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, said, it is enough of a lie for a man that he narrates everything he hears. Abu Tahir Ahmad bin Amr bin Sar narrated to me, he said, Ibn Wab narrated to us, he said, Malik said to me, Know that a man who relates everything he hears is not safe, and he can never be an Imam, as long as he narr narrates everything he hears. Muhammad bin Ul-Mutana uh, Ul narrated to us, he said, Abd ur Rahman narrated to us, he said, Sufyan narrated to us on authority of Abu Ishaq, on authority of Abil Awas, on authority of Abd Illa, he said, it is enough of a lie for a man that he narrates everything he hears. Muhammad bin Ul Mutana narrated to us, he said, I heard Abd ar Rahman bin Mahdi saying, a man cannot be an Imam whose example is followed until he withholds from some of what he hears. Yahya bin Yahya narrated to us, Uma bin Ali bin Mukaddam informed us on authority of Sufyan bin Hussein, he said, Iyas bin Muawiya asked me, saying, Indeed, I see that you love knowledge of the Quran, so recite for me a surah and explain it until I can reflect on what you know. Sufyan said, So I did that, and Lias said to me, Memorize from, from me what I am about to say to you. Beware of abominations in Hadith, for indeed rarely does anyone convey them except he lowers himself in his, um, and his Hadith are denied. Abut Tahir and Harmala bin Yahya narrated to me. They said, Ibn Wab narrated to us. He said, Yunus informed me on authority of Ibn Shihab on authority of Ubaid Allah bin Abd Allah bin Utba that Abd Allah bin Masud said It is the case that you do not relate to the people of a narration which their minds cannot grasp except that it becomes a fitna for some of them. Chapter 4 The weak narrators, liars and those whose hadith are avoided Muhammad bin Abd Allah bin Numair and Suhair bin Harb narrated to me. They said Abd Allah bin Yasid narrated to us. He said Said bin Abi Ayyub nar narrated to me. He said Abu Hani narrated to me on authority of Uthman Muslim bin Yasar, on authority of Abi Huraira, on authority of the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah upon him, he said, There will be in the last of my nation a people narrating to you what you nor what you nor your fathers heard, 
so beware of them. Harmala bin Yahya bin Abd Allah bin Harmala bin Imran at Tujibi narrated to me, he said, Ibn Wab narrated to us, he said, Abu Shurai narrated to me that he heard Sharahil bin Yasid saying, Muslim bin Yasar informed me that he heard Abba Huraira saying, The Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah upon him said, There will be in the end of time charlatan liars coming to you with narrations that you nor your fathers heard. So beware of them lest they misguide you and cause you tribulations. Abu Sa'id al Ashai Ashaj narrated to me, Waki narrated to us, Al Amas narrated to us on authority of Al Musayab bin Rafi, on authority of Amir bin Abda. He said, Abd Allah bin Masud said, Indeed, Satan will appear in the form of a man and he will come to the people narrating to them false hadith and they will then depart. Then a man among them will say, I heard a man whose face I recognized but I do not know his name narrating such and such. Muhammad bin Rafi narrated to me, Abd ur Rasak narrated to us, Mamar informed us on authority of Ibn Tawus, on authority of his father, on authority Abd Allah bin Amr bin Alas, he said, Indeed, in the sea are devils chained up, whom Sulaiman shackled, and they are at the point of emerging, then they will recite a Quran upon the people. Muhammad bin Abad, Muhammad bin Abad and Said bin Amr al Ashati narrated to me on authority of Ibn Uyayna. Said said Sufyan informed, informed us on authority of Hisham bin Hujayr. On authority of Tavus he said Bushair bin Kab came to Ibn Abbas so he said so he set about narrating to him. Ibn Abbas said to him, Go back to such and such, such narration. Then Bushair returned to it and narr narrated it. So Ibn Abbas said to him, Go back to such and such narration. Then Bushair returned to it and narrated it. Thus Bushair said to him, I do not know whether you know all of my hadith and you reject this one and that or if you reject all of my hadith and know this one and that Ibn Abbas said to him indeed we would be narrated narrated to, to an authority of the messenger of Allah peace and blessings of Allah upon him at a time when one would not lie upon him however when the people took the, dif took the difficult munkar and the dokkail do sahih we abandoned listening to hadith from them. Muhammad bin Rafi narr narrated to me, Abd ur Rasak narrated to us, Mamar informed us on authority of Ibn Tawus, on authority of his father, on authority of Ibn Abbas, he said, indeed we will take hadith and they would be taken on authority of the messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah upon him. However, if you take every difficult and docile doc narration, then how far that is from being upright? Abu Ayyub Sulaiman bin Ubaid Allah al Gailani narrated to us. Abu Amir, meaning al Akadi, narrat narrated to us. Rabbah narrated to us on authority of Qais bin Said bin Saad on authority of Mujahid he said Bushair ul Adawi came to Ibn Abbas then he set about narrating to him saying 
the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah upon him, said, the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah upon him, said, then it seemed that Ibn Abbas was not listening to his hadith and not reflecting on them. So Bishayr said, O Ibn Abbas, why is it that I see you not listening to my hadith? I narrate to you on authority of the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah upon him. However, you are not listening. Ibn Abbas said, Indeed, once upon a time we would listen to a man saying, The Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah upon him, said, rushing towards him with our eyes and hearkening towards him with our ears. Then, when the people took the difficult and the docile, we no longer took from people except those whom we knew. Dawood bin Amr ad Dambi narrated to us. Nafi bin Umar narrated to us on the authority of Ibn Abi Mulaika. He said, I wrote to Ibn Abbas asking him to write something pertaining to knowledge for me. And he withheld from me quite a bit and said, as if he were a sincere child, I will write for him something especially suited to his statu status withholding from from him what would not benefit him. Ibn Abi Mulaika said, so Ibn Abbas called for the judgment of Ali bin Abi Talib, which was a book with which Ali would pass verdicts in Kufa, and he began to write from it with respect to the request of Ibn Abi Mulaika, and he came upon something not appropriate to the station of Ali regarding the science of verdicts. So Ibn Abbas said, By Allah, Ali did not give judgment according to this unless he was astray. Ahmed an Naqid narrated to us, Sufyan bin Umayna, uh, Uyayna narrated to us on authority of Hisham bin Hujayr. On authority of Tavus, he said, a book was brought to Ibn Abbas, which contained the verdicts of Al Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, and he effaced but a small amount, and Sufyan bin Uyayna indicated with his arm the amount. Hassan bin Ali al Hulwani narrated to us, Yahya bin Adam narrated to us, Ibn Idris narrated to us, on authority of Al-Amas, on authority of Abu, Ish Abu Ishaq, who said, when they narrated these things after Ali, may Allah be pleased with, them, with him, a man from the companions of Ali said, may Allah curse them, did they corrupt every type of knowledge? Ali bin Kashram narrated to us, Abu Bakr, meaning Ibn Ayash, informed us, he said, I, I heard al Mukira saying, There are no hadith on authority of Ali. May Allah be pleased with him, that are confirmed except from the company companions of Abd Allah bin Masud. Chapters 5 That which is related to the statements, the chain of narration is from the religion. Transmissions are not taken except from trustworthy narrators and criticism of the narrators with what is permissible regarding them, even oblique obligatory and that it is not the prohibited kind of backbiting, rather it is the defense of the noble Sharia. Hassan bin Ur Rabi narrated to us. Hamad bin Said narrated to us on authority of Ayyub and Hisham 
bin Hassan on authority of Muhammad bin Sidin and Fudail bin Liad narrated to us on authority of Hisham bin Hassan he said Muklad bin Hussein narrated to us on authority of Hisham bin Hassan on authority of Muhammad bin Sidin that he said indeed this knowledge is fate so carefully consider from whom you take your fate Abu Jafar Muhammad bin Us Sabat narrated to us Ismail bin Sakaria narrated to us on authority of Asim il Awal on authority of Ibn Sirin that is said they would not ask about the change of narration and when the fitna occur occurred they said name for us your man your men so all us sunnah would be regarded regarded and their hadith were then taken and all ul bida would be regarded and their hadith were not taken Ishaq bin Ibrahim al Hantali narrated to us Isa and he is Ibn Yunus informed us al Absa I narrated to us on authority of Sulaiman bin Musa he said I came across Tavus and said so and so narrated to me such and such then he said if your companion is trustworthy then take from him Abd Allah bin Abd Dir Rahman Ad Darimi narrated to us Marwan meaning Ibn Muhammad Ad Dimashki informed us Said bin Abd Il Aziz narrated to us on authority of Sulaiman bin Musa he said I said to Tavus so and so narrated to me like this and that he said if your companion is trustworthy then take from him Nasser bin Ali al Jadhami narrated to us al Asma'i Asma narrated to us on authority of Ibn Abi Sinad on authority of his father he said I met 100 transmitters in Al Madina, each of whom were reliable narrations, were not taken from one about who it was said, he is not from its people. <coughs> Muhammad bin Abi Umar al Maki narrated to us, Sufyan narrated to us, and Abi Bakr bin Khalad al Bahili narrated to us and the wording is his he said I heard Sufyan bin Uyayna on the authority of Misar he said I heard Saad bin Ibrahim saying there is to be no narrating on authority of the messenger of Allah May Allah send blessings and peace upon him, except by trustworthy narrators, Tikat. Muhammad bin Abd Allah bin Qusat from the people of Marv narrated to us. He said, I heard Abdan bin Utman saying, I heard Abd Allah bin Al Mubarak saying, the chain of narration is from the din, and were it not for the chain of narration, whoever wished could say what he wanted. Muhammad bin Abd Allah said, Al Abbas bin Abi Risma narrated to me. He said, I heard Abd Allah bin Al Mubarak saying, between us and the people are the legs, meaning the chain of narration, yet yeah, if a hadith was like a creature. Muhammad said, 
I heard Ab Abba Ishak Ibrahim bin Isa at Talkani say, I said to Abd Allah bin Al Mubarak, O Abba Abd Ir Rahman, how is the hadith which goes indeed from Al Bid after Al Bid? Is that you pray for your parents after you pray for yourself and you fast for them both after you fast for yourself? So Ibn Al Mubarak said, O Abba Ishaq, on whose authority is this? I said to him, This is a hadith from Shihab bin Kiras. Ibn al Mubarak said, He is trustworthy. On whose authority did he transmit? I said, On authority of Al Hajjaj bin Dinar. Ibn al Mubarak said, He is trustworthy. On whose authority did he transmit? I said, he, Al-Hajjaj, said, The Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah upon him, said, Ibn al-Mubarak said, O Abba Ishaq, indeed between Al-Hajjaj bin Dinar and the Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah upon him, is a wilderness in which the necks of the mounts are severed. However, there is no difference of opinion regarding charity offered on behalf of one's parents. Five B, uh, chapter five B, unveiling defects of the transmitters of hadith and relators of reports and the statements of the aima regarding that. Muhammad said, "I heard Ali bin Shakik saying, I heard Abd Allah bin Al Mubarak saying." in front of the people, and ban abandoned the hadith of Ahmed bin Thabit, for indeed he would curse the Salaf, he had the companions, the companions, may Allah be pleased with them. With them. Abu Bakr ibn in Nadir bin Abin Nadir narrated to me, he said, Abu Nadir Hash, Hashim bin Ul Qasim narrated to me, Abu Akil, companion of Buhayya, narrated to us, he said. I was sitting near Al Qasim bin Ubaid Allah and Yahya bin Said bin Qais al Madani al Qadi, -Qadi when Yahya said to Al Qasim, O Abba Muhammad, indeed it is gravely harmful for the likes of you to be asked about something from the affair of this din. And then knowledge of it is not found with you, and no relief in the form of an answer, or knowledge and no art articulation. So al Qasim said to Yahya bin Said, where did that come from? Yahya said, it is because you are the son of two Imams of guidance, a descendant of Abu Bakr and Umar, Al Qasim said to him. More harmful than that according to whoever reflects about Allah is to speak without knowledge or take hadith from someone who is not trustworthy, Abu Akil said. So Yahya bin Said was quiet and did not respond to him. Bishr bin Ul Hakam Al Abdi narrated to me. He said, I heard Sufyan bin Uyayna saying, They informed me on authority of Abi Akil, companion of Bahia, uh, um, companion of Buhaya, that a descendant of Abd Allah bin Umar was asked about something that he did not have knowledge about. So Yahya bin Said said to him, By Allah, indeed it is a grave matter that the likes of you, a descendant of two Imams of guidance, meaning Umar and Ibn Umar, is asked about a matter and you have no knowledge of it. So 
So Al Qasim said, By Allah, more grave than, the, than that according to Allah, and to whoever reflects about Allah is to speak without knowledge, or to report on authority of one who is not trustworthy. Ibn Uyayna said that Abu Akil Yahya bin Al Mutawakil witnessed them both when they said that. Ahmed bin Ali Abu Hafs narrated to us. He said, I heard Yahya bin Said, he said. I asked I asked Sufyan Sufyanat Tav Tavri Shuba Malik and Ibn Buyena about a man who is not reliable, Fabt in Hadith. And someone comes and asks me about him and they said inform others against him that he is not reliable. Ubaid Allah bin Sayyid narrated to us, he said, I heard another saying. Ibn Avn was asked about the hadith of Shar. And he was standing at the threshold of the door. So Ibn Avn said, Indeed they criticized Shar, indeed they criticized Shar. Muslim, may Allah have mercy on him, said he means the tongues of men who were busy criticizing him. Haja bin Ush Shair narrated to me Shaiba, Shaibaba, uh, Shababa narrated to us. He said, Shuba said, I had met Shar then abandoned transmitting, transmitting from him. Muhammad bin Abd Allah bin Qusada, uh, Qusad from the people of Marv narrated to me. He said, Ali bin Hussein bin Waqid informed me. He said, Abd Allah bin Al Mubarak said, I said to Sufyan at Tavri. Indeed, Abad bin Qatir, about whose condition you are aware, when he related narrations, he introduced a grave matter. Do you believe that it should be said to the people, do not take from him? Shufian, um, Sufyan said, Indeed, Abd Allah bin Al Mubarak said, So when I was in an assembly and Abad was mentioned there, I praised him regarding his din and said, do not take from him. Muhammad said, Abd Allah bin Uthman narrated to us. He said, my father said, Abd Allah bin Al Mubarak said, I ended up in, a, in an assembly of Shuba. And he said, this is Abad bin Qatir, so be warned against him. Al, Al Fadl bin, Shal, bin Sal narrated to me. He said, I asked Mu'allah ar Rasi about Muhammad bin Said, whom Abad transmitted from. So he informed me about what Isa bin Yunus said. I was at his door and Sufyan was with Muhammad bin Said. Then when he came out, I asked Sufyan about him. So he informed me that he was a liar. Muhammad bin Abi Atab narrated to me. He said, Afan narrated to me on authority of Muhammad bin Yahya bin Said al Qatam. On authority of his father, he said, We do not see the righteous more false in anything than they are regarding Hadith. Ibn Abi Atab said, so Muhammad bin Yahya bin Said al Qatan and I met and I asked him about it and he said on authority of his father you will not see the people of good al u Qair more false in anything than they are regarding hadith Muslim said he was saying that falsehood flows upon their tongues although they do not intend to lie
Al Fadl bin Sal narrated to me. He said Yasid bin Harun narrated to us. He said Khalifa bin Musa informed me and he said I entered upon Ghalib bin Ubaid Allah so he began dictating to me. Makul narrated to me this and Makul narrated to me that. So he prepared to answer the cold nature and stood up. Then I looked in his notebook and in it was Aban narrated to me on authority of Anas and Aban on authority of so and so. <coughs> so I abandoned listening to this to his hadith and stood up to leave. I heard Al Hassan bin Ali al Mulhulwani saying, I saw in one of the books of Afram a hadith of Hisham, Abil Miktam, meaning a hadith of Umar bin Abd il Aziz. In it was written, Hisham said, <coughs> A man said to be Yahya bin so and so narrated to me on authority of Muhammad bin Kab al Hulwani said I said to Afan they would say Hisham heard it directly from Muhammad bin Kab so Afan said indeed Hisham was stricken with accusations of lying with regards to this hadith for he would say Yahya narr- narrated to me on authority of Muhammad then he claims afterwards that he heard it from Muhammad directly. Muhammad bin Abd Allah bin Qusad narrated to me. He said, I heard Abd Allah bin Uthman bin Yabala saying, I said to Abd Allah bin Al Mubarak. Who is this man from whom you transmit the hadith of Abd Allah bin Amr? The day of Fitr is the day of prices. Abd Allah said, Sulaiman bin al Hajjah, look at what I placed in your hands of praise about him. Ibn, Qas, Ibn Kusta said, I heard. Wab bin Sama mentioning about Sufyan bin Abd il Malik, he said, Abd Allah, meaning Ibn al Mubarak, said, I saw Rav bin Gutaif, the companion of blood, the amount of a dirham. And I took a seat in one of his audiences. Then I began to become ashamed for my companions to see me sitting with him while his hadith are disapproved of. Ibn Kusad narrated to me. He said, I heard Wab bin Sama saying on authority of Sufyan bin Abd il Malik, on authority of Ibn al Mubarak, he said, Bakia bin al Walid is truthful of tongue, however, he transmits hadith from those who approach the muhadithin, ye are trustworthy, and from those who turn their backs on the muhadithin, ye and are weak. Kutayba bin Said narrated to us, Jarir narrated to us, on authority of Mughira, on authority of Ash Shabi, he said, Al Hadith al Avar ul Hamdani narrated to me, and he is a liar. <laughs> Abu Amir Abd Allah bin Barad al Ashari narrated to us. Abu Usama narrated to us. On authority of Mufadal, on authority of Mughira, he said, I heard Ash Shabi saying, Al Har Al Harit al Avar narrated to me and he Ash Shabi was testifying that he was one of one of the liars
Kutayba bin Said narrated to us, Jarir narrated to us, on authority of Mughira, on authority of Ibrahim bin Yasid, on Nakai. Nakai. He said, Al Kama said, I memorized the Quran in two years. Al Harith said, The Quran is easy. The revelation, he had the secret revelation to Ali in the belief of the Shia is more difficult. <clears throat> Hajjaj bin Ash Shair narrated to me, Am Ahmad meaning Ibn Yunus narrated to us, Saida narrated to us, on authority of Al Amas, on authority of Ibrahim that Al Harith said, I studied the Quran for three years and the revelation for two years, or he said, the revelation in three years and the Quran in two years. Hajjaj narrated to me, he said, Ahmad and he is Ibn Yunus narrated to me, Saida narrated to us, on authority of Mansur and Al Mughira. On authority of Ibrahim that Al Harith was imputed. Kutayba bin Said narrated to us, Jarir narrated to us, on authority of Hamza as Sayyad, he said. Mura al Hamdani heard something from Al Harith and said to him, Sit by the door, Hamza said. So Mura went inside and took his sword, and Al Harith sensed evil and left. Ubaid Allah bin Said narrated to me. Abd ud Rahman, meaning Ibn Madi, narrated to us. Hamad bin Said narrated to us. On authority of Ibn Avn, he said, Ibrahim said to us, Beware of Al Mughira bin Said and Abu Abd ar Rahim, for they are both liars. Abu Kamil al Jadari narrated to us. Hamad and he is Ibn Said narrat narrated to us. He said, Asim bin Badala narrated to us. He said, We would catch up with Abu. Abd ar Rahman as Salah Sulami, and at the time we were young men. So he would say to us, Do not sit with storytellers other than Abul Awas, and beware of Sha Shakik Abu Abd Ram ar Ram Abu Abd ar Rahim, Muslim, said. This Shakik held the view of the Kavarij and is not Abu Wail, Shakik bin Salama, the righteous Tabi. Abu Ghassan Muhammad bin Amr ar Rasi narrated to us. He said, I heard Jarir bin Abd al Hamid bin Kurt ad. Dabi saying, I met Jabir bin Ras Yasid al Jufi and did, and did not write hadith from him. He believed in Ar Raja, Ar Rafidi, belief regarding Ali returning. Al Hassan al Hulwani narrated to us. Yahya bin Adam narrated to us. Misar narrated to us, he said. Jabir bin Yasid narrated to us. Before there took place what happened? Yeah, before his false beliefs. Salama bin Shabib narrated to me. Al Humaydi narrated to us. Sufyan narrated to us, he said, the people will transmit from Jabir before there appeared what appeared then, when there appeared what appeared, 
the people in, imputed him in his hadith, and some of the people abandoned him. So it was said to Sufyan, what appeared? Sufyan said, belief in Ar Raja. Hassan al Hulwani narrated to us. Abu Yahya al Himani narrated to us. Kabisa and his brother Sufyan bin Ukba narrated to us that they heard al Jara bin Mali saying, I heard Jabir say, <coughs> I have 70,000 hadith, all of which are on authority of Abu Jafar on authority of the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him. Hajjaj bin Ash Shahid narrated to me, Ahmad bin Yunus narrated to us. He said, I heard Suhail saying, Jabir said, or I heard Jabir saying, indeed I have 50,000 hadith that I have not nar narrated from, all, from at all. Suhaid said, then that day he related a hadith and said, this is from the 50,000. Ibrahim bin Khalid al Yashkuri narrated to me. He said, I heard Abu Walid saying, I heard Salam bin Abi Muti saying, Muti saying, I heard Jabir al Juli saying, I have 50,000 hadith on authority of the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him. Salama bin Shabib narrated to me, Al Humaydi narrated to us, Sufyan narrated to us. He said, I heard a man ask Jabir about the verse, thus I will never depart from the land until my father permits me or Allah decides for me, and he is the best of judges. Yusuf 80. Jabir said, An interpretation has not come to me about these verses. Sufyan said, He lied. We said to Sufyan, What did he mean by this? Sufyan said, Indeed, the Rafida say, Ali is. <coughs> Ali is in the clouds, and we will not emerge along with he who will emerge from his children, the Khalifa. Until a caller calls from the heaven, meaning Ali, ride out along with so and so, meaning the promised Mahdi. Jabir said, that is an interpretation for these verses, and he would lie as they were regarding the brothers of Yusuf, peace be upon him. Salama narrated to me, Al Humeida narrated to us, Sufyan narrated to us, he said. I heard Jabir talking about something like 30,000 hadith. <coughs> that I did not regard as permissible to mention anything from, and that to me was like this and that hadith. Muslim said, I heard Abu Ghassan Muhammad bin Amr al Rasi say, I asked Jarir bin Abd il Hamid, Did you meet Al Harith bin Hasira? He said, Yes. Then he, Isa, Shaykh of lengthy silence, he persisted in a grave matter. Ahmad bin Ibrahim ad Dav Raka Raki narrated to me. He said, Abd ur Rahman bin Madi narrated to me on authority. Hamad bin Said, he said, Ayub mentioned a man one day and said about him. He is not upright in speech, yet he lies. And he mentioned another person and said, He adds to re records, yet he lies. <coughs> Hajjaj bin Ash Shair 
narrated to me Sulaiman bin Harb narrated to us Hamad bin Said narrated to us he said Ayub said indeed I have a neighbor and he mentioned some of his virtues and continued even if he testified to me about two dates I would not see his testimony as permissible Muhammad bin Rafi and Hajjaj bin Ash Shaid narrated to me they said Abd ur Rasak narrated to us he said Mama said I did not see Ayub speaking ill of anyone ever except for Abd al Karim meaning Abu Umayya so we mentioned him and said may Allah have mercy on him he is not trustworthy he had asked me about a hadith of Ikrima then said I heard from Ikrima when relating the hadith Al Fadl bin Sal narrated to me he said Afan bin Muslim narrated to us Hamam narrated to us he said Abu Dawud al Amma came to us began saying Al Bara bin Asib the companion narrated to us he said Said bin Arkam narrated to us and he mentioned that those changed to Katada Katada said he lied he did not hear him he, he did not hear from them he would beg the people asking about Hadith at the time of the plague circa circa 67 H Hassan bin Ali al Hulwani narrated to me. He said Yasid bin Harun narrated to us. Hamam informed us. He said Abu Dawud al Ama entered upon Katada. And when he stood, they said, Indeed, this one alleges he has met 18 of the warriors of the Battle of Badr. Katada said, this one was barely asking about Hadith before the plague. He did not attend to anything from seeking Hadith and he did not speak to any scholars regarding it. By Allah, Al Hassan did not narrate to us from a witness of the Battle of Badr without an intermediary. Intermedi and Said bin al Musayib did not narrate to us from a witness of the Battle of Badr without an internal diary, except from Saad bin Malik. Uthman bin Abi Shaiba narrated to us, Jarir narrated to us on authority of Rakaba that Abu Jafar al Hashimi al Madani was fabricating narrations with words of truth <clears throat> and they were not from the narrations of the Prophet peace and blessings of Allah upon him though he was transmitting them on authority of the Prophet peace and blessings of Allah upon him <clears throat> Al Hassan Al Hulwani narrated to us he said Nuyaim bin Hamad narrated to us. He said, Abu Ishaq Ibrahim bin Muhammad bin Sufyan said, and Muhammad bin Yahya narrated to us. He said, Nuyaim bin Hamad narrated to us. Abu Dawud at Tayalisi narrated to us on authority of Shuba. On authority of Yunus bin Ubaid, he said, Ahmed bin Ubaid would lie regarding Hadith. Ahmed bin Ali Abu Hafs narrated to me, he said, I heard Muad bin Muad saying, I said to Av, Av bin Abi Jamila, indeed Ahmed bin Ubaid narrated to us on authority of Al Hassan. That the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah upon him, said, Whoever carries arms against us, then he is not from us. Of 
bin Abi Jamila said Ahmed lied by Allah rather he intended it as a way to permit his fifth his filthy opinion <laughs> Ubaid Allah bin Umar al Kawariri narrated to us Hamad bin Said narrated to us he said <coughs> a man kept company with Ayub and listened to Hadith from him but then Ayub did not find him one day when Ayub asked the people said oh Abu Bakr indeed he keeps company with Ahmed bin Ubaid now Hamad said one day we were with Ayub and we went to the market early in the morning. A man came to meet Ayub, so he gave salam to him, asked how he was doing. And then Ayub said to him, It reached me that you kept company with that man. Hamad said, Ayub des- designated him. That is to say, Amr, the man said, Yes, O Abba Bakr. Indeed, he came to us with strange things, yet reports. Ayub said to him, Indeed, we flee or we fear from those, from these strange things, transmissions. Hajjaj bin Ash Shair narrated to me, Sulaiman bin Harb narrated to us, Ibn Said rather Hamad narrated to us, he said, it was said to Ayub, indeed Amr bin Ubaid transmitted an, an authority of Al Hassan that he said, there is no flogging the one who gets drunk from Nabid, Ayub said, he lied for I heard Al Hassan saying, flog the one who gets drunk from Nabid. Hajjaj narrated to me, Sulaiman bin Harb narrated to us, he said, I heard Salam bin Abi Muti saying, it reached Ayub that I would go to Al-Amr. So he turned to me and said, have you seen a man whose din you did you do not trust? How do you trust him regarding Hadith? Salama bin Shabib narrated to me Al Humaydi narrated to us Sufyan narrated to us he said I heard Abu Musa Israel bin Musa Al Basri saying Amr bin Ubaid narrated to us before what happened yeah before he became Mutasili Ubaid Allah bin Mu'ad al-Ambari narrated to me. My father narrated to us, he said. I wrote to Shuba asking him about Abu Shaiba, a judge of Wasit. So he wrote to me, do not write anything from him of Hadith and tear up my letter to you about this. Al-Hulwani narrated to us he said i heard afan bin muslim say i narrated to hamad bin salama bin dinar al basri on authority of sali al muri a hadith on authority of tabi fabit bin aslam al banani then Hamad said, Sali lied. I also narrated to Hamam on authority of Sali al Muri. A hadith then Hamam, Hamam said, Sali lied. Mahmud bin Gailan narrated to us. Abu Dawud narrated to us. He said, Shuba said to me, Go to Jarir bin Hasim and say to him, It is not allowed for you to transmit from Al-Hassan bin Umara, for indeed he lies. Abu Dawud said, 
I said to Shiba, and how do you know that? So Shiba said he narrated to us on authority of Al Hakam things <coughs> that were not found to have any basis. Abu Dawood said, What things? Shuba said, I said to Al Hakam, Did the Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah upon him, pray over the martyrs of Uhud? Al Hakam said, He did not pray over them. Al Hasan bin Umada said, on authority of Al-Hakam, on authority of Miksam, on authority of Ibn Abbas, indeed the Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah upon him, prayed over them and buried them. Shuba said to Al-Hakam, What do you say about the children born from fornication? Al-Hakam said, Pray over them. I, Shuba said, From whose hadith is it transmitted? Al-Hakam said, it is transmitted on authority of Al-Hassan Al al-Basri. Al-Hassan bin Umara said, Al-Hakam narrated to us on authority of Yahya bin Al-Jassar on authority of Ali. Al-Hassan al-Hulwani narrated to us. He said, I heard Yasid bin Harun mentioned Siyad bin Maimun and he said I swore that I would not transmit anything from him or Khalid bin Maduj Yasid said <coughs> I met Siyad bin Maimun and asked him about a hadith so he narrated it to me on authority of Bakir al Musani then I returned to him and he narrated the same hadith to me on authority of Muvarik. Then I returned to him and he narrated it to me on authority of Al Hassan. Al Hulwani said he Yasid would ch would charge both of them with lying he had Siyad bin Maimun and Khalid bin Maduji Maduj Al Hulwani said I heard Hadith from Abd as Samad and I mentioned Siyad bin Maimun near him and he charged him with lying. Mahmud bin Gailan narrated to us, he said, I said to Abu Dawud at Tayalisi, you transmit a great deal on authority of Abad bin Mansur. So how is it that you did not hear the hadith of the lady, perfume seller, from him which another bin Shumail transmitted to us. Abu Dawud said to me, Be quiet for Abd ar Rama bin Madi, and I met Siyad bin Maimun and asked him, saying to him, Are these hadith you transmit on authority of Anas? Siyad said, Have you seen a man sin and then repent? Does Allah not turn to him? Abu Dawud said, we said yes. Siyad said, I did not hear from Anas whether a little or, or a lot. If the people did not know, then you too would not know that I did not meet Anas. Abu Dawud said, so it reached us afterwards that he was transmitting from Anas, then Abd ar Rahman, and I went to him, and he said, I repented, then afterwards he was narrating again in the same fashion, so we abandoned him. Hassan al Hulwani narrated to us, he said, I heard Shababa say, Abd ul Qudus was narrating, narrating to us, saying, Suwayd bin Akala said, When it should be bin Gafala. Shababa said, And I heard Abd ul Qudus saying, 
the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah upon him, prohibited taking a rav by accident. Shababa said, so it was said to him, what does this mean? Abd ul Qudus said, it means to make an opening in a wall, thus letting a breeze enter by accident. He changed the original hadith, switching ru meaning soul to rav or breeze. And he switched garadan meaning as a target to ardan, ardan or accidentally all simply by changing a few letters in the words. Muslim said, I heard Ubaid Allah bin Umar al Kawariri saying, I heard Hamad bin Said saying to a man after he sat with Madi bin Hital, Hilal for days. What is this salty well, yet yeah, useless or harmful, which has sprung up in your direction? He said, Yes. O Abba Ismail in agreement. <clears throat> Al Hassan Al Hulwani narrated to us. He said, I heard Afan say, I heard Abu Avana say, A hadith did not reach me on authority of Al Hassan except I presented it to Aban bin Abi Ayas. Then he read it to me. Suwaid bin Said narrated to us. Ali bin Musir narrated to us. He said, Hamsa as Sayat, and I heard from Abam bin Abi Ayas something like 1000 hadith. Ali said, So I met Hamsa. Then he informed me that he saw the Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah upon him, in a dream, and he produced for him what he heard from Abban. However, he, the Prophet, didn't recognize any except a small amount like five or six hadith. Abd Allah bin Abd ar Rahman and Ad Darimi narrated to us Zakaria. Bin Adf informed us, he said, Abu Ishaq al Fasari said to, me, said to me, Write from Bakia what he transmits on authority of those who are well known, and do not write f- from him what he transmits on authority of those who are not. Do not write from Ismail bin Ayash. Ayas what it transmits on authority of those who are well known or otherwise. Ishaq bin Ibrahim al Hantali bin Rawai Rawai narrated to us, he said, I heard one of the companions of Abd Allah bin al Mubarak say, Ibn al Mubarak said, What an excellent man! is Bakia, if it were if it were not for the fact that he would provide a nickname for those who were better known by the birth name and he would provide the birth name for those who were better known by a nickname for a long time he would narrate he would narrate it to us on authority of Abi Said al Wuhati. Then, when we investigated, we were surprised that he was Abd ul Qudus. Ahmad bin Yusuf al Asti narrated to me. He said, I heard Abd ar Rasak saying, I did not see Ibn al Mubarak say, Mubarak express so plainly the, ch- the charge of lying except towards Abd ul Qudus. For indeed, I heard him saying to him, you are a liar. Abd Allah bin Abd ar Rahman ad Darimi narrated to me. He said, I heard Abu Nuaim and he mentioned Al Mu'alla bin Urfan. So Abu Nuaim 
said Al Mualla said Abu Wail narrated to us he said Ibn Masud attacked us on the day of Sifin so Abu Nuaim said do you think he was raised after death Ibn Masud passed away in 32 or 33 age several years before the day in question Amr bin Ali and Hassan al Hulwani narrated to me both of them on authority of Afan bin Muslim he said we were near Ismail bin Ulaya and a man narrated on authority of another man so I said indeed this is not reliable fabt so the man said are you backbiting him Ismail said he is not backbiting him rather he is judging him unreliable Abu Jafar Ad Darimi narrated to us Bisser bin Umar narrated to us he said I asked Malik bin Anas about Muhammad bin Abd Ar Rahman who transmits on authority of Said bin Al Musayib so he said he is not trustworthy I asked him about Sali a freed slave of At Tawama then he said he is not trustworthy I asked him about Abul Huwairit and he said he is not trustworthy I asked I asked him about Shuba on whose authority Ibn Abi Dib transmitted and he said he is not trustworthy I asked him about Haram bin Uthman and he said he is not trustworthy I asked Malik about these five and he said they are not trustworthy in terms of their hadith I asked him about another man whose name I forget just now and he said did you see him in my book I said no then he said if he was trustworthy you would see him in my book <coughs> Al Fadl bin Sal narrated to me he said Yahya bin Main narrated to me Hajjaj narrated to us Ibn Abi Dib narrated to us on authority of Shurabil bin Sad and he was imputed with lying regarding Hadith near the end of his life Muhammad bin Abd Allah bin Qusad narrated to me he said I heard Abu Ishaq at Tarkani saying I heard Ibn al Mubarak saying if I had to choose between entering paradise and meeting Abd Allah bin Muharrar I would have chosen to meet him then enter paradise then when I saw him dung was more pref preferred to me than him Al Fadl bin Sal narrated to me Walid bin Sali narrated to us he said Ubaid Allah bin Amr said Said meaning Ibn Abi Unaysa said do not take hadith from my brother Ahmad bin Ibrahim ad Davraki narrated to me he said Abd us Salam al Wabisi narrated to me he said Abd Allah bin Jafar as um, ad Raki narrated to me on authority of Ubaid Allah bin Amr he said Yahya bin Abi Unaysa was a liar Ahmad bin Ibrahim narrated to me he said Sulaiman bin Harb narrated to me on authority of Hamad bin Said he said Farqad was mentioned near Ayyub so he said indeed Farqad is not a companion of Hadith Abd ur Rahman bin Bisr al Abdi narrated to me he said I heard Muhammad bin Abd Allah bin Ubaid bin Umair al Laiti was mentioned near Yahya bin Said al Qutan so he weakened him severely then it was said to Yahya more weak than Yaqub bin Atta he said yes then he said 
I did not see anyone transmitting on authority of Muhammad bin Abd Allah bin Ubaid bin Umair. Bisad bin al Hakam narrated to me. He said, I heard Yahya bin Said al Qatan, weakened Hakim bin Jubair and Abd al Atta uh, Allah, and he weakened Yahya Musa bin Dinar. There is no bin between Yahya and Musa. Yahya said, His hadith are ri or wind, yet not established and weak. Yahya weakened Musa bin Dikan and Isa bin Abi Isa al Madani. Muslim said, I heard Al Hassan bin Isa saying, Ibn al Mubarak said to me, When you go to Jarir, then write down all of his knowledge except the hadith of free people. Do not write the hadith of Ubaida bin Muatib, As Sarf bin Ismail, or Muhammad bin Salim. Muslim said similar instances to what we mentioned from the words of Al Ulim regarding those transmitters who are imputed in hadith and reports about their defects are great in number it would lengthen this book to mention its investigation and what we already mentioned should be sufficient for whoever reflects upon and understands the way of the people muhaditin in terms of what they said and clarified of all of that Indeed, the Muhaditin concerned themselves with the unveiling of the defects of transmitters of hadith and narrators of reports. They delivered verdicts in that at the time they were asked when there was a great danger involved, considering that the reports are regarding affairs of the din, whether the transmissions present a per present a permission or, prescri or proscription, a command or prohi prohibition, encouragement or admonition. If the transmitter for it is not a source of truthfulness or reli reliability, then those who know his condition who risk transmitting on his authority and not declaring his condition to others whom are ignorant of his state are sinning through through doing that and deceiving the common Muslims since he should not feel secure in that some of those who heard those reports will act upon them uh, or act upon some of them and perhaps they are lies which have no basis or a majority of them this along with the fact that authentic reports from the trustworthy chains and the people who are satisfactory, satisfactory to the majority of all ulim are in too great a number to compel relating from those who are not trustworthy and who are not satisfactory. I do not think highly of those who would permit from the people what we described of these weak narrations and unknown chains and who judge by these transmissions after knowing what is in them of those who are imputed and weak unless he through his conve conveyance and judgment by them desires to accumulate status through that among the commoners or that it can be said how great is the number of hadith that so and so has gathered and, comp and compiled. Those who held this ideology regarding knowledge and traversed this path have no share in it and that they were dis designated as being, as being ignorant is more deserving than for them to be attributed to knowledge. Chapter 6 
chapter 5c what is declared sound regarding the transmission of some transmitters on authority of others and warning against those who make mistakes in that some pretender to knowledge of hadith from the people of our time made a statement regarding authenticity authentication authentication and weakening of chains chains a statement that if we were to disregard relating it and disregard mentioning its evil truly it would be a strong opinion and sound approach since turning away from the renounced view and dropping any mention of its speaker are most appropriate for putting it to rest and better suited so as to not draw the attention of the ignorant to it other than for what we fear from the evil results and dangers dangers of the ignorant in innovated matters and their hastening towards believing in the mistakes of those who err and the rejected statements according to the scholars we think the unveiling of the evil of his statement and refutation of its speaker with the amount which is deserved from refutation is more beneficial upon the creation and more praiseworthy ultimately if Allah wills the speaker who we introduced by way of speaking on the account of his opinion and the reports of the evil of his thinking alleged that every chain for hadith which has in it so and so narrated on authority of so and so Mu'anon Mu'anon and he has knowledge that they were contemporaries and the probability that the hadith which the narrator transmitted from whom he transmitted had heard it from him and spoke face to face with him without or are knowing or knowing for certain that the narrator heard from the one who transmitted to him and without finding in any of the transmissions that they ever met and spoke face to face for the purpose of hadith that the proof is not established according to him in any report which comes in this manner until he has knowledge of both transmitters meeting in their era one or more times and speaking face to face for the purpose of narration or he wants a report in which their meeting is clarified their having met once in their era or more than that then if he does not have knowledge of that and there does not come to him an authentic transmission reporting that this transmitter who relates on authority of his companion met him once and heard from him something there will be no proof of his relating the report from whom he transmitted on authority of the matter just as we described as a proof transmitters being contemporaries and the possibility of having met existing and the report according to him is unresolved until there arrives the transmitters hearing from him something from hadith a little or a lot in, tra in a transmission clarifying the hearing equal to what he narrated with Muanon. Chapter 6 The soundness of relying on hadith related with the term meaning on authority of The statement may Allah have mercy on you of accusation regarding the Mu'anon chains is an invented one produced without pre precedent, precedent and there is no one who supports him from al ul il in that the widespread opinion which is agreed upon whether al ul il 
with reports and transmissions early and recent is that each trustworthy narrator who transmits a hadith from his equal with the feasible prob probability for a transmitter to meet who he transmits from and, hears, and hear from him due to their being together in the same era even if there never came a report that they met or spoke face to face then the transmission transmission is affirmed and using it as a proof is appropriate unless there is a there is clear evidence that the trans that this transmitter did not meet who he transmits from or that he did not hear anything from him then as for when the matter is ambiguous regarding the possibility which we explained previously then the transmission is always accepted as coming by way of hearing until there is evidence otherwise which we pointed out thus it is said to the inventor of this opinion whose speaker is as we have described or to his defender you have provided in the sum total of your statement that the report of the single trustworthy narrator on authority of the single trustworthy narrator is a proof which is required to act upon. Then you introduced into it the condition afterwards and you said until we know that the transmitter had met once or more and heard something from the one he transmits from so have you found this condition which you stipulated from anyone of all ul ilm who also required it and if not then bring me evidence of what you allege thus if he claims there is a statement from one of the scholars of the Salal Salaf for what he alleged in introducing the condition in affirming reports then confirm it however neither he nor others will ever find a way to produce it even though he claims about what he alleges there is evidence to rely on it is said what is the evidence what is that evidence thus if he said, I said it since I found transmitters of reports, early and recent transmitting hadith from each other, and the transmitter did not ever see or hear anything from, from the one he transmits from. Thus, when I saw them, permitting the transmission of hadith between them like this irsal without hearing between transmitters while the mursal from the transmissions in the foundation of our view and that of al ul ilm in reports is that it is not a proof on account of what i described from the weaknesses from the weakness I rely on researching the hearing of the transmitter in each report on authority of, of who he transmits from. Thus when I unexpectedly come upon his hearing from the one he transmits from due to the low amount of a thing he had transmissions on his authority all of what he transmits on his authority becomes fixed to me thereafter and if knowledge of his actually hearing from whom he transmits from is too distant from me I withhold from the report and according to me it does not have a position of proof due to the possibility of Isra of Irsal in it thus it is said to him then if the reason 
for your weakening then muanan muanan report and your abandoning relying on it is due to you to the possibility of irsal in it it obligates you to not affirm or chain of muanan until you see it see it has hearing sima from its first transmitter to its last and according to us it is possible that the hadith you described which has come to us on authority of Hisham bin Urva on authority of his father on authority of Aisha we know with certainty what Hisham heard from his father and that his father heard from Aisha just as we now just as we know that Aisha heard from the prophet peace and blessings upon him it is possible that when Hisham does not say in the transmission that he transmits on authority of his father the words i heard or he informed me that there could be between him and his father another person who informed Hisham of it on authority of his father in this transmission and he did not hear hear it from his father when he preferred transmitting it mursal and it is not att- attributed to who he really heard it from just as that is possible from Hisham on authority of his father then it is also possible for his father on authority of Aisha and like that all chains from for hadith in which the hearing of each transmitter from the other is not mentioned and if it was known in some transmissions that every single one of them did hear from his companion a great deal then it is still possible for each one of them to drop in some of the transmissions such that he hears from someone else some of his hadith then exp- expedites on authority of his most famous companion occasionally while not designating who is who he actually heard from and at times he is afraid and designates who he actually related the hadith from and abandons irsal what we mentioned from this is found in hadith from the actions of trustworthy muha ditin and aima of ul of al ul il and we will mention several of the transmissions upon the pathway which we mentioned demonstrating through them the great amount of the above if allah exalted is he wills thus from that are the following that ayub as saktiani ibn al mubarak waqi ibn numair and a group of others transmitting transmitted on authority of hisham bin urwa on authority of his father on authority of aisha may allah be pleased with her she said i applied sent to the messenger of allah peace and blessings upon him at the time of entering and leaving iran with the most pleasant scent i found Thus light bin late bin Saad Dawud al Atiyar Humaid bin al Aswad Vuhayb bin Khalid and Abu Usama transmitted this transmission on authority of none other than Hisham he said Utba Utman bin Urwa informed me on authority of Urwa on authority of Aisha on authority of the prophet peace and blessings upon him
and Hisham transmitted on authority of his father, on authority of Aisha. She said, the Prophet peace and blessings upon him. When he was in El Tikaf, lowered his head towards me, then I combed his hair and I was menstruating. Then Malik bin Anas transmitted the exact narration on authority of Asuri, on authority of Urwa, on authority of Amra, on authority of Aisha, on authority of the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him. Asuri and Salih bin Abi Hassan transmitted on authority of Abi Salama. On authority of Aisha, the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, would kiss while fasting. Thus, Yahya bin Abi Qatir said about this report regarding kissing. Abu Salama bin Abd ar Rahman informed me that Umar bin Abd al Aziz informed him that. Udva informed him that Aisha informed him that the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, would kiss her while fasting. <clears throat> Ibn Uyayna and others transmitted on authority of Amr bin Dinar, on authority of Jabir. He said, the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings upon him, allowed us to eat horse meat and prohibited us from donkey meat, and Hamad bin Said transmitted it on authority of Amr, on authority of Muhammad bin Ali, on authority of Jabir, on authority of the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him. And this manner of transmitting narrations is abundant. It's enumeration being much and what we mentioned is sufficient for those who possess understanding thus when the reason for weakening those for weakening these types of transmissions according to the one whose opinion we described before in terms of the invalidation of hadith and weakening them when it is not known that the transmitter heard anything through the one who through the one he transmits from is that Israel Israel is possible in them. His opinion leads to his being obligated to abandon relying on transmissions of those who are known to have heard through who they transmit from unless there is mention of hearing in the reports itself in the report itself due to what we have clarified before of the Aima who related reports that at times they would expe expe expedite the hadith as Irsa and not mention who they heard it from and at times they would be so inclined so they would provide the chain for the report in the form that they heard it they would report a narration through descent from a peer from a peer or someone below them in age or status if it was descended and with elevation with less narrators between them and the Prophet peace and blessings upon him if it was elevated just as we explained about them we are not aware of anyone from the Aima of the Salaf who when he sought to act upon reports and investigate the soundness or weakness of the chains of, nar of transmissions transmission like those of Ayub as sucked Saktiani Ibn Avn Malik bin Anas Shuba bin al Hajjaj <coughs> Yahya bin Said al Qatan 
Abd ar Rahman bin Madi and those after them from the people of Hadith. He examined the situation regarding the manner of hearing in the chains, like what is claimed in the in the opinion of the one we described previously. Those who investigated among the scholars of Hadith would only investigate the hearing of the transmitters of Hadith they transmitted from when the transmitter was among those who were known for toddles in Hadith and famous for it. Thus, when they investigated a transmitter's manner of hearing in his transmissions and they would research that about him in order to distance themselves from the defects of toddles. Thus, to research that about the non mudalis from the perspective of the one who alleged what he did in the opinion we related then we have not heard of that from anyone we designed we designated and do not designate from the aima Thus, from that is Abd Allah bin Yasid al Ansari, who saw the Prophet peace and blessings upon him. He transmitted a hadith on authority of Hudayfa and Abi Masud al Ansari, attributing it to the Prophet. Peace and blessings upon him, and there is no mention of hearing in his transmission from either of them. Also, we have not preserved in any of the transmissions that Abd Allah bin Yasid ever met Hudayfa or Abu Masud face to face for Hadith. We have not found mentioned in an, in an actual transmission his seeing either of them and we have not heard from any of Al Ul who have passed or who we have met, who charged with weakness these two reports, who Abd Allah bin Yasid transmitted. On authority of Hudayfa and Abu Masud, rather according to those we met from Al Ul Ilm in Hadith, those two reports and whatever is similar to them are among the authentic and strong chains they held the view of acting by what was re related by them and relied upon what came from the Sunan and Atar in that manner and it is weak and abandoned in the allegation of the one whose view we related before until hearing of the transmitter is obtained from whoever transmits them and even if we took to enumerating the authentic reports according to Al Ul Ilm whereof they are weak in allegation of this speaker and we counted them truly we would not be able to fully examine its mention and enumerate all of them rather we, pref we, pref we prefer to place several as a symbol for what we remain silent on. Abu Utman an Nadf Nadi and Abu Rafi as Saig. Both were from among those who witnessed the age of Jahiliya. The time before Islam in the Arabian Peninsula and were among the companions of the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings upon him, who witnessed the Battle of Badr and so on and so forth. They both related reports on authority of the companions until they related hadith from younger companions, the likes of Abu Huraira and Ibn Umar. 
each of these two transmitted a single hadith on authority of Ubay bin Kab, on authority of the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, and we did not hear in an actual transmission that they had seen Ubay with their own eyes or heard anything from him. Abu Amr Ash Shaibani witnessed Al Jahiliya and was an adult during the time of the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, and Abu Mamar Abd Allah bin Shakbara. Uh, Sakbara, each transmitted two reports on authority of Abu Masud al Ansari, on authority of the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him. Ubaid bin Umayr transmitted a hadith on authority of Umm Salama, wife of the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, on authority of the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, and Ubaid bin Umayr was born in the time of the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him. Qais bin Abi Hasim transmitted three reports on authority of Abu Masud al Ansari on authority of the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, and he witnessed the time of the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him. Abd ar Rahman bin Abi Layla transmitted a hadith on authority of Anas bin Malik on authority of the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, and he heard from Umar bin al khattab and accompanied Ali Rib I Ribi bin Hiras transmitted to Hadith on authority of Imran bin Hussein. On authority of the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, and a Hadith on authority of Abu Bakr, on authority of the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him. Rib Ribi heard from Ali bin Abi Talib and trans transmitted on his authority. Nafi bin Jubair bin Mutim transmitted a hadith on authority of Abi Sh Shurai al-Qusai on authority of the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him. Al Numan bin Abi Ayas transmitted free ha a hadith on authority of Abu Sa'id al-Qudri on authority of the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him. Atta bin Yasid al Laiti transmitted a hadith on authority of Tamim ad Dari on authority of the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him. Sulaiman bin Yasar transmitted a hadith on authority of Rafi bin Khadij on authority of the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him. Humayd bin Abd ar Rahman al Himyari transmitted narrations on authority of Abu Huraira, on authority of the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him. Thus, all of these tabi if tabi'in we named whose transmissions are on authority of, com of companions are not recorded in separate transmissions to have heard directly from them to our knowledge and are not recorded to have met them in the course of the actual report they are sound chains or transmissions transmission according to those who possess knowledge of reports and transmissions. We do not know of them ever weakening anything of them or asking about whether they heard from each other, since the hearing of each one of them from his companion is possible without anyone rejecting that, due to them all being together in the same time period. This opinion that the speaker invented, which we related regard, regarding weakening, weakening the hadith, 
for the reason which he described is too inferior, inferior to be relied upon or too inferior for its mention to be st stirred up since it was an invented opinion and a backward discussion which no one from al ul ilm stated before and those who came after them denounced it thus there is no need to us um, no need to for us to refute it with more than what we have already explained since the standing of the speech and its speaker is that which we described and Allah is the one with whom aid is sought in repelling what differs from the school of the scholars and, he, and in him alone complete trust is placed. <laughs>